This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Bet Fred. I'm down at the Peacock Gym today. Delighted to be joined by Dynamite Daniel Dubois. Daniel, thank you for taking the time to speak to me after training. First and foremost, how are you, my friend? All right, I'm good, thank you. That's good to hear. Uh, we'll come on to your fight and, and everything that comes with it. Obviously, one place to start. We've just had a huge, huge heavyweight fight over the weekend. Tyson Fury cl- crowned WBC world champion. Did you watch the fight, Daniel? I'm sure you did. Yeah, of course. It was uh, amazing. The belt's all back in Britain and it was great for, great for boxing, really, I think. The better man won and he just went out there and took it to him and came away with the victory. He did what he, was, what he had to do and kudos to him, he did great. Tyson did exactly as he told us he was going to do. He told us throughout the build-up he was going to get in there and try and bully him. He said he wanted to try and stop him early. He dropped him in the third round and just took over from there completely. How impressed were you with the manner in which he managed to adapt from the first fight? Well, he just, you know, he said, as you say, he did said what he was going to do and he went out there with a game plan, obviously, and just took it to the guy. Just out, outdone him in every apart, department and um, everything that Tyson had, his size and his boxing and, ev- and his just size, sheer size, just too much for the guy. It's it. Tyson Fury's been described as many things. Not often do you hear Tyson described as a puncher, though. Were you surprised by his power in there? He seemed to be hurting Deontay with pretty much everything he threw. Yeah, he just took him apart, really. Um, you can't, it, you know... Um, he still, you know, he just he just took the guy apart. It's still, like I can say, he took him apart. Mark Breland in Deontay Wilder's corners came under a bit of criticism uh, from Deontay himself for throwing in the towel at that point. He said he's instructed his team never to throw in the towel, but do you think it was the right time to, to throw in the towel, a compassionate stoppage with the fight only going one way? Yeah, definitely. I think so. It was a right decision. Your man's no a chance of winning. Would you want to see the guy um, just, just completely... You know, this this life this life is on the line. So you want you if you're not winning it and you haven't got really a chance of winning it, you don't need to carry on. If that's the case in that situation, I think he did the right, made the right decision. Now the big storm since the fight, Daniel Costume Gate. Twitter's been going mad. The internet's been broken by Deontay Wilder and Jay Diaz both saying that his forty-pound costume on route to the ring sort of weakened him going into the fight. He said he wasn't hurt by Tyson Fury. What do you make of that? Um, no idea. It's, it's just, it sounds like an excuse. Um, he's got to just really just get his head together and find out what he really wants to do next. Does he want to fight? Does he want to continue? Does he? What's going on? Um, this this thing about the suit, you should have known beforehand what, what he was doing, but evidently you're not. But anyways, it is what it is. Does that mean we can expect no super, superhero costumes on April 11th? No way. <laughs> I'm no frills guy. Yeah. Johnny Wilder does have the right to the trilogy. It looks like he is going to exercise that right as well. Do you think, regardless of the manner of the defeat, he needs to take that and, and take the one chance he has probably to get his belt back? Of course, he has got a punch of ch- punch's chance. And as you've shown before, he has that right hand that can change the whole fight. So if he wants to continue and, and just jump straight back in and go for it, Joshua did the same. He came off a stoppage loss, and which gained his title. He could... Tr- he needs to, if he wants to, so we'll total up to him. But if I was in that situation, I would take the rematch. Now, there is talks of Bob Arum and Eddie Hearn trying to make the undisputed fight right now and trying to get sort of Wilder and Pulev to step aside. Regardless, it looks like it could be realistic, even if both guys have to go and face their respective challenges. With the undisputed fight, you've done rounds with Joshua. I think you've only done like one or so with Fury, but you've still been around him in the gym. Who would you lean towards if that happens? Um, I'd- Probably have to put Fury as a favourite now mm. after that performance. Um, yeah, he'd be the favourite, but Anthony's a different fighter from Deontay. He's a lot more compact and as hopefully he doesn't, hopefully he just comes out and fights all, with all he's got and they both bring, a, bring their own game and it should be a great night of boxing. How exciting is it for you to have all four belts sort of in British hands with you, realistically, if you keep winning maybe 12 to 18 months away from getting in and challenging for one of them belts yourself? Yeah, it's great. It's all on the line now. Um, I think it's, it's, it's on the horizon. So I think is on, is on the horizon. I've got my own challenge ahead in April, you know, and um, after that, there's the sky's the limit. Staying with yourself, what's the mood like among the Dubois family at the minute? You're preparing for your first pay-per-view fight, a huge fight for British boxing, for heavyweight boxing. Your sister Caroline's working towards the Olympic Games as well. How is the mood around the Dubois family? Um, it's it's constant, constantly uh, 
everyone's hard at work and what they're doing and switched on, you know, 100%. Caroline's up in Sheffield at the moment as we speak on a, on a camp and she's she's just grinding it, grinding it out and, you know, working towards her goals. So, so am I, you know. Um, Olympic gold medals, she brings us at home, it's going to be crazy. This fight with Joe Joyce on April 11th is, as mentioned, a huge fight for the heavyweight division after that long, grueling media day, which will come on to you being back down here at the Peacock, working away. Does it feel any different to you when you're in training, working towards such a big fight? Um, an extra focus, maybe, but not, nothing else, really. Same, same old, in the gym every day, same stuff, eat, sleep, train, repeat, and I've been doing that so, so long, really, in my boxing, since the day I started boxing, so it's nothing new to me. To go back to that media day, Daniel, even before you came and spoke to the likes of myself at the press conference, you were on national television, you were down at TalkSport, and then afterwards you have to go do some filming as well. You had to face off of him several times throughout the day. Was it a weird day? Was it a grueling day? How do you explain it? Um, it was just tiring. It took so much energy sapping, um, really. It was, I would rather have done without it, but here we go. It's in media obligations and stuff, but next time, yeah, not so much. <laughs> There's shots going back and forward all day. You both had plenty to say. For you, is is this personal at all, or is it strictly business? Oh, it's no, no personal with Joe. It's, it's um, it's, it's, I've got to win the fight, and it's um, the biggest fight of my career so far. So, uh, my my emotions are running high. I'm passionate about this game, and I want to win. Did you take anything from that day, or do any sort of comments just bounce off you as you go into the, the biggest fight of your career? Did, does any of that mean anything? No, nothing. Um, really, if, if I don't take none of it on board, what anyone says, um, it's flying, you know, words flying around. It's just really irrelevant. I'm focused on what I've got to do, in, you know, come training camp and what I've got to make sure that I, I handle myself well in the correct manner and do what I have to do. Now, among the comments at the press conference, you, you were saying plenty of Joe. Joe was firing back. You even had an exchange with his mum as well. Joe said to me when I spoke to him in Las Vegas, that sort of fired him up, but his mum seemed quite jovial about it afterwards. Did you speak to her? No, no. Um, it is what, you know, I haven't got nothing to say to anyone, to her. Um, I said what I said at the time, and that's it. Now, I'm not expecting you to sit here, Daniel, and give me a play-by-play -play of what you've planned for for the fight, but in your mind, is this a seek-and-destroy mission? Do you only see this finishing inside the distance? Yeah, possibly a, dinner, um, a knockout, but I'm going to box first, you know, exhibit boxing skills, do what I've done throughout my amateur career, boxing career, and what I've learned to date, you know, for the 10-plus years of, or 8, 10 years I've been boxing throughout my amateur career and what I've I've learnt from the amateurs. I'm going to put all to good use on this night. With a win against Joe Joyce, you know, Olympic silver medalist, someone who himself is trying to fast track to the very top. Where does that leave you in the heavyweight division if you win and win in style as well in April? Do you feel you're just under those guys holding the belt? Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm just focused on this fight. I'm really, it's, it's this fight is a, bas a massive fight. It's, um, you know, Domestically, it's massive, um, and I think on a world level as well. Joe's a quality heavyweight. There's not too many others around, and um, potentially you'll have to. Sp I'll speak to Frank and that, but I think it does. It's not too far away from the big boys. On Frank, you recently signed a long-term extension with Frank. How excited are you for the future, given how he's guided you so far, right to this point where, even relatively short into your career, you're headlining on pay-per-view in such a big fight as well. Um, it's it's very cool, you know, um, I'm tied up with Frank now, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna you know just do the best we can and you know whoever I would be, it's, I need I would need to be with the top promoter and now Frank's got the um, you know the heavyweight world champion, so you can't get better than that really. Daniel, final one, because I appreciate you stay behind after training to speak to myself. I asked Joe when I seen him last week in Las Vegas for his final word. What would he say if you were watching? I'm gonna ask you for the same. Dynamite, Daniel Dubois, if Joe Joyce was to see this, what would your final message be ahead of that huge fight April 11th? You know, just bring your A game. I'm going to be more than ready for it. and it's, gonna, it's a great fight and, you know, bring it on. Bring it on. Daniel, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck with the rest of your training. We'll catch you very soon.